Good evening. Welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board regular business meeting on Tuesday, November 14th, 2017. If you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item one, adjustments to the agenda. Yeah, I actually want to make an adjustment um, to uh, the October business meeting agenda um, number six, B. That's actually the, we'll move to that when we get into approval of minutes. Oh. But we are going to remove that if you want to do that. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, the board at this time is not going to act on adoption of school board goals and we'll table that to another the un, another meeting. So 6A will be removed tonight. Any other adjustments to the agenda? Moving on to item two, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion please? So you can move in and amend. Um, do you want me to make the motion and then you amend it? Mm -hmm. I move that we approve the school board minutes as they appear in our this evening's packet. I would like to make a motion to amend um, section 6B where the vote is currently listed as 6-0. Uh, it should be read as 5 one five. I accept your change to my motion. Thank you. You're welcome. I have that in my notes as well. Do I have a second on Joe's motion? Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Moving on to item three, comments by student representatives. Welcome. Hi, it's great to be here tonight. Um, we have several items that we want to bring to your attention. Um, so to get started, um, last Wednesday during achievement period at the high school, we had a fantastic and inspiring Hope Garden planting event. Um, there was a great turnout and with lots of positive energy. Um, and this is part of the Yellow Tulip Project initiative that we brought to Cape um, this year. And so our next step um, is going to, in this process, is going to be creating a large bulletin board um, that says what makes you hopeful, and then leaving space for students to write on sticky notes um, their comments. Um, and then on Friday, I will actually be going to the Maine Principals Association Fall Conference um, to present the Yellow Tool Project um, and also share the success that it has had in Cape Elizabeth. So that's really exciting. Um, so WAC hosted our Bollywood night last week on a kind of different note, um, and it was a success. We've had high attendance with the club so far, um, mostly by underclassmen. Um, we'll be rolling out our fundraiser in the next couple weeks, which will be um, chocolate, cocoa, and coffee sales. And uh, SAFE, which is the event that um, I organized, I was a sophomore, and the, a board of like faculty and students organized um, an event to raise, raise awareness about sexual assault um, two years ago. Uh, we are planning on doing the event every two years, and so this would be the next one, and this year would be the next one. Um, we have our second meeting this Thursday where we'll begin to plan our event more in depth and um, designate different people for different roles that they specified they would excel in in a survey we sent out a month ago. Um, and then next, Cape Elizabeth High School and the Seeds of Peace Domestic Program um, are officially, officially partners, um, which is really exciting. It means that we'll have the opportunity to send three um, kids from Cape Elizabeth to camp each summer, and also possibly an educator um, along with them. 
Um, applications are posted online right now, um, and within the next couple of weeks, we will be bringing in a couple of Seeds of Peace alumni um, to sort of explain the program in greater depth. And so, um, a parent in the community named Shale Norris um, runs Safe Bay, which is a nonprofit organization that works to spread awareness about sexual assault throughout high schools in the United States. Um, reached out to me last year about having Cape Elizabeth High School be a pilot school um, for running their program for raising awareness about sexual assault. So, um, and she reached out to me and to Cape High School specifically because she believes it's a really welcoming and opening environment that would be apps really well, that would receive um, this really well. So, I've been working with her um, and I've hung up a lot of posters that are really powerful throughout the school and I was going to bring one but I forgot, so sorry about that. Um, and they're just raising awareness about sexual assault and I think that everyone can agree, and we have like clubs and stuff um, for this too, so I think that everyone agrees that in light of everything that's going on in the media specifically, it's really important to have really good outlets for um, people in our school and in our community, and Safe Bay does this really effectively. Um, and so something on the RESPECT team, um, which is a team made up of students, faculty, and administration um, that came together in the wake of the 2016 um, presidential election, and sort of the overall goal of this um, group is to honor all students of the school um, and make sure our, our high school is as inclusive as possible. Um, so a few weeks ago, we hosted our first assembly um, along these lines. And our plan going forward is to have two assemblies per month. Um, one posing as more of an informa information session um, for students to give updates on clubs, sports, achievements that they've made. Um, and the goal of this is sort of just to share every, like the perspective from all students in the community, not just the athletes or the musicians. It's to give an outlet for um, everyone. And then um, the other in the, within the month will be a specific speaker um, on a matter, um, social awareness, identity, um, topics of that of that sense. Um, and then in addition to that, the RESPECT team will be holding its second annual Bridges Potluck dinner this Sunday evening. Um, and this event runs from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. All Cape Elizabeth um, residents will be welcome. And the purpose of this dinner is pretty simple. It's basically just to share a meal um, and a conversation with others in your community and sort of branch out to new people that you may not have met. Um, and if you plan on attending, we encourage you guys to bring a dish um, that reflects what your family um, would eat. And then anything in, in that sense is welcome. And it's sure to be a really captivating and enjoyable experience. Um, so we hope to see you there. Um, so the Model UN team at our high school had a conference last week at Brown. And it was really successful. A sophomore in a crisis committee won best paper, which is really, really impressive because underclassmen are usually in um, GAs. So that was really cool. And we have a really good Model UN team. So, and Brown is a really hard conference, so that was really cool to see. Um, and senior to senior hours have begun, which is when seniors at the high school uh, do community service for senior citizens in our community. And a lot of students have obtained their hours by um, like raking leaves around the community for senior citizens, and a lot of that took place this past weekend. So that's been going well. Um, and National Helpers had our fall retreat today, and I wasn't able to attend, unfortunately. But it, what, from what I heard, it was really successful and impactful, like it usually is. Okay, so finally, just a quick recap on sports and clubs since our last meeting. Um, so the winter sports seasons will begin next Monday. Um, just an update on the fall sports teams. Unfortunately, the field hockey team did not make playoffs, um, but they did win their senior night game at home, so that was great. Um, both girls and boys soccer made a good run into playoffs. Um, the girls lo losing in the Western Maine finals and the boys losing in the semifinals. Um, cross country did really well, and they actually sent two runners to the um, New England championships which is a great accomplishment. And then finally, um, the biggest of all, volleyball, um, finished their season undefeated and won in three straight sets versus Falmouth. So 
um, that was great. And then with football, they're heading um, to Orno this Friday um, to play in the state championship game, and we'll be sending a fan bus, so that should be an exciting um, event. Oh no, that's uh, speech and debate. That's one thing I wanted to mention. We have our um, second meet of the year this Friday or this Saturday. Um, speech is in Falmouth and debate is at Deer. Um, and then Deer. Debate where? Um, debate Deering. is at Deer. Mm -hmm. And then just last, um, <laughs> Club Unify, um, which is a club that brings together students of all abilities, um, had its first meeting and there was a great turnout um, and we're really excited to get going this year. In the past we've participated in most of the athletics with the Special Olympics um, and Unified Basketball, which are both really great programs, but um, this year we're hoping to enhance it by adding um, social and volunteer um, components to it to really include some of those that aren't as comfortable with athletics. Thank you. Thank you for that very comprehensive <laughs> update. We appreciate it very much. I look forward to the next potluck for the respect um, group. Mr. Shea, you're good. Now. Now. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> I don't think he's needed. <laughs> Moving on to item four, comments from the public on agenda items. Seeing none, <clears throat> moving on to item five, communications. At this time, we'd like to welcome Kevin Stilfen from the Portland Arts and Technology High School. Thank you so much for making time for us tonight. Thank you for the invitation. I greatly appreciate it. for inviting uh, me over to speak to the board. I, would pre I appreciate it when uh, the superintendent reached out and offered it some time to come talk about PAFs. What I want to just get into and talk to about with PAFs is Portland Arts and Technology is your local area CTE center. And we have students who come <laughs> from 19 different high schools and organizations and take 19 different programs. I could probably keep you here until all hours of the night talking about PAFs and maybe even trying to convince you about what we do and the value of what we do. And I won't do that because Howard especially told me not to. But <laughs> what I want to do is, is put one thing out there, actually two things. Uh, I'm going to two points. I'm going to show you a video and then I'm going to ask a, a former student to come up and talk about his experience at PAFs. The thing I want to say about uh, CTE education, which is what we have rebranded ourselves as, is career and technical from the old vocational model. It is not an either or proposition. And what I mean by that, <coughs> it does not mean that you attend a school like PAFs and you never go on to learn or go to school uh, go to college, go to a community college. 63% of the students that we common, that we share with our sending schools do further their education. So it's not an either or, but there are students who come and they'll tell me, Mr. Stilfen, if I never sit in another classroom again and a former high school teacher and listen to my uh, teacher talk about the Magna Carta, uh, I'll be happy. So what we tell them is, that's great. But you got to be a learning person. Wherever you go, you're going to have to learn. We, so we don't put it out there as an either or. It's a pathway for success. And the other is a challenge. Um, as, as Emily can, will attest to, uh, I've coached lacrosse and we have rivals. And we get up for our rivals. And I will let you know that I toured the Yarmouth School Board at PAFS 10 days ago. 
uh, you have an open invitation to come and walk through the school because you have to see it uh, to get a full understanding of what we do. Uh, so I thought I'd throw the, uh, the Yarmouth piece out there. Uh, so we you we put down the gauntlet there. I did. Uh, I did. It's so unlike me. Um, I wanna, what we did is we worked with a uh, Herman Mantis, which is a local video production, with our students to develop some videos. Each program has its own video. I'm going to show you the um, general recruiting vid video that we show students when we go out to high schools and talk about paths. Uh, if you would like to see every one of them, landscape will have their own 45 second cut, but I want to just show you the, the general recruiting uh, video that we'll use, so I'll get it queued up here. And as you can see, we have everything from uh, dance to art to Welding, which is what Tully is a graduate of. Is that coming through? So I don't know if you want to turn the lights out, if that's appropriate Robert's rules, but um, we'll start it here. <laughs> this is what we, again, what we use to start our recruiting process when we go out to different high schools. And we go to, we're invited into every high school that we work with to speak to underclassmen. Our model is a two-year model, juniors and seniors. Uh, and this was, again, this was work that was done with some professional uh, film makers, and they worked with our students in our new media program. my 65 Mustang, I'm reselling that. I do all the work on my cars at home. Paz has such a renowned name. I go into a place, I say, I'm from Paz. They will pick a Paz to guarantee it, because Paz creates such a better learning experience. From being a freshman, who didn't know what he wanted with his future, but now like being so sure that I want to be a filmmaker and going to film school. If I never came to PATH, I would never have that dream come alive. I would never have that ambition that I have now, that drive to pursue a film career. So this program really changed my life. Coming here was probably the best thing I'd ever done in the last 13 years I've gone to school because we're all here doing something that we love and it really doesn't matter what you're here for because we're all here to do the same thing. I really wanted to cook, but I didn't want to just start off in the kitchen. I was too scared to do that. And this is a great way to get some skills, get some experience and really work your way into that. We've gone through and figured out how we have to price a lot of the things for cafe, our labor, our time, how much it costs to power the building you're in, how much your rent is. All these things go into how much you have to cost for your individual food. We have to work with customers and we have to exchange money and go through all the counting and it's a really well-rounded experience. I would like to own my own food truck and then eventually my own restaurant. As we leave Pats, we know a lot about the business aspect for the field that we're going into, and I think that that's universal for all the programs. We've spent a lot of time with not only customers, but with people who've been in the trade for over 20 years, and it's just so easy to talk to them and easy to understand where they're coming from because we've been in this program. All of us have gotten offered different jobs just because of the experience we've gotten here. 
It's built up my confidence because some people might have never done stuff like this before and if they're going to go off to college I mean, they're going to be three hours away from home doing something they've never done before but coming here will give you an opportunity to experience it and to start your learning process. And I loved it the first time I came and visited. I even visited twice. It's a great opportunity to meet new people, learn new things, and kind of just go with the flow. Someone that's kind of on the fence for coming here, I say just do it. Find what you love. You just have to go for it. I get to experience what it's like to be out in the field of a machinist, of someone who designs 3D printers. It's allowed me to see so many different parts of the engineering world, of the machining world, and also just learn how to become a better learner. learn about how to kind of create connection and how to build networks and just how to like use the people around you to better your learning. I think it's a super supportive environment and I love that there's a place in Portland for kids to come and be immersed in what they love to do. You're doing work, you're learning, it's just like school but it's stuff you enjoy so it's a little bit different. Run at it with everything you got and it'll be the most fun you've ever had. There is a program here for you. So that is the, uh, the, the recruiting video that we'll lead with. And if students are interested in a specific program, they're able to uh, watch the other ones. And again, I could go into millions of reasons why and the value added a student can achieve by coming to Vass. And I will do that. If you wonder if you would like to come for a tour or reach out to me, I am a Cape Elizabeth resident. So uh, I'm here to answer uh, questions at any time. But what I would really like to do is have you uh, meet one of our common, I'm going to call you a product, Tully, come on up here. Um, <laughs> Tully is a student, a graduate of PATH and of Cape Elizabeth High School. And I think it's, it's I invited him to come and just talk about his experience and his journey that he took to get to where he is now. So, Tali Matusko. Thank you guys for having me this evening. Um, <clears throat> my name is Tali Matusko. Uh, I graduated from Cape Elizabeth in 2016 and uh, Portland Arts and Technology High School in 2016. I attended the welding um, program over there. I uh, managed to land a few national uh, structural welding certifications and. Didn't really use those, but found another good welding job over in Gorham and managed to put everything that I learned over there to use. And now we're uh, manufacturing some of the most high high tech parts across the world, um, making broadcasting components, um, parts for nuclear accelerators, uh, all sorts of cool stuff. So they yeah. have. A lot, a lot of good programs over there and a lot to learn and I think more kids should, should put it to more use for sure. Go check things out over there. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. Can you talk, because when we speak to students, we talk about stepping outside of their comfort zone. So how does, how did you end up coming to pass? What was the reason? You get out of us and leave the high school that you go to, and uh, uh, stepping outside of your comfort zone. So. I well, school wasn't. I didn't really like sitting in class all day to begin with. I always enjoyed working with my hands. So after I finished all the, the classes that uh, Mr. Ray offered there, I had to go somewhere else. So <laughs> just start, started working with metal more. Really and went to paths and went from there. It, it happens as a partnership. It's the guidance counselors at the different schools, the administrators, that they know their students and they'll make referrals and, and say, hey, have you thought about house? And, and, it, and it's just an example of the partnership that we have with all of our sending schools. 
And, and it really is, uh, I, I admire my students, one of the things I admire the most about them is their courage to step outside their comfort zone, drive on the bus, and come to a different school uh, that people may or may not think, hey, uh, what's the success there? And again, I definitely appreciate your time. You have a, you sincerely, you have an open invitation, individually or collectively, to come and visit my school and our school at any time. Um, we love having the groups in. And Falmouth said, and Yarmouth said that they loved it. And I could never get the cable team to come over anyways. So, <laughs> but thank you very much. Thank you both very well, much. Congratulations thank you guys. on your success, and thank you both. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vincent Olson, oh, yes. he was a Paths graduate, too. Mm -hmm. Now he's running the, the big Cape Cottages now by SMCC. Cottage Road Garage. Yeah. And he taught in Paths until yeah. yeah. his business was so busy, he had to resign from Paths Instruction to run his yeah. huge business. Yeah. I know Vince well. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm so grateful for you coming and showing um, us this video and you describing your, your path from Paths. Um, I, I wish that more of our students were aware of this as, a, as a, another option. Um, and I believe you know, that we are, of the sending schools, have the fewest students coming to pass. I would love to see that. I increase. will tell you that the schools that we've seen increase in numbers are the smaller schools like uh, Greeley, Falmouth, Yarmouth, and Cape Elizabeth. Uh, there's a little bit more of uh, being a little bit more nimble in terms of being able to recognize uh, the value of what we do. Mm -hmm. And we are, uh, just the fact that I'm standing here in front of the uh, Board of Education in Cape Elizabeth is a great opportunity for us. And we, we have really embarked on internally uh, looking at what we do and make sure that we, if we say we're doing it, we're gonna do it. We're, it's like any organization, we are really working hard to get better. We are in the early process of looking at adding two new programs. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be a, a cybersecurity, uh, computer-based program. There's a process that I have to go through, uh, and it looks that that's where we're gonna land at. And, and you know, we have to teach programs that offer programs that provide certification for the education, employment. So we're not teaching uh, Cooper right now. When I say that to the community, like, what are you talking about? We don't make barrels. Uh, so we have to be responsive to the needs of the business community and make sure that there's, a, there's further trainings. And uh, I, we feel that, you know, we're getting our story out there. People are listening to us. And I, I believe that we'll see more students from Cape from all of our schools. So, again, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. I want to extend, I think, a uh, special welcome and also that um, we look forward to try, hoping to sort of expand contact with you. I think the hands-on learning piece mm -hmm. of what you do is where a lot of education is going and look for ways to opportunities to work together. We're delighted to have you, as, as I as speak as a parent now, to have you come and be part of our Festival of Curiosity where you had a booth and we're that was great. there yeah. and, great. and really show what the hands-on learning looks like. And I have always felt that the hands-on learning piece of all of those programs that you do are part of being a well-rounded person and not um, not separate from academics. Right. Um, and, and so uh, to the extent we can sort of expand and, and cooperate going forward, I would love to be a uh, part of that. We appreciate that statement. And, and we've always had it in, in, in Jeff and, in, and Mr. Carpenter are always a phone call away. We communicate, the guidance counselors. We have strong relationships. And I just very optimistic that we're going to see a lot of great things happening and, and numbers increasing at apps. Hope to see you at Paps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Moving on to item 5B, principal updates. Was there a rock, paper, scissors in the audience or? <laughs> Jason, oh, do it. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Shed from the high school. Please. Get the front chair, I get to go first. So I think I was last the last time. Um, I'll just fill in a couple of gaps. Whoa. A couple of gaps from, um, but 
Emily and Allie. Um, I can't remember if you mentioned the mock trial team, but the mock trial team um, won its first meet this <coughs> last weekend, I think it was. Um, and then there's a group of the mock trial team that's going down to New York City this weekend for the Empire competition, which is a huge, intense competition. Uh, so, um, and the amount of time that mock trial students put into their trials is just unbelievable. Um, it takes an incredible amount of dedication. Um, two weekends ago, our robotics, I think it was two weekends ago, our robotics team participated in a competition. Um, there were two teams. We had one team that were declared the tournament champions, which is the highest award and have qualified for the states, and that's Ryan Collins and Oliver Kraft and Nate Labrie and Caleb Weinstein Zenner, um, who were part of the tournament champion team. And then there was another two-person team that won an excellence award, and that is Joe Jacobson and Joey Labrie. So that was really nice. Um, our, our quiz show team is um, attempting to get back into the uh, quiz show competition this year. And PBN uh, sponsored the first time last year a, a quiz show competition between local high schools. And we were fortunate enough to qualify to get into the broadcast competitions. And then we ultimately made it to the finals, but sadly came in runners up uh, to a really, really strong team. Um, so the team just took its qualifying exam a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago, and they're waiting to see if they get into that event. Um, our science team is changing a little bit this year. We're continuing to do a, a science bowl team. Um, that's part of what we do. We have, for quite a few years, participated in the North Shore Science League competition, which is a monthly competition that brought teams down to Mass North Shore of Massachusetts to compete, and our teams have historically done very well. Um, one of the stipend nominations you have in front of you tonight is to appoint Tom Mikulka, um, who's a local citizen and community member and scientist, as the other part of our science team competition we're actually changing. So we're not going to be participating in the North Shore Science League, but instead he's already begun to organize a team of what about, I think it's almost 15 students to participate in the Intel Science Competition, uh, which is a really, really um, neat original scientific research opportunity. Um, our Achievement Center um, uh, usage has gone up substantially this year. Um, it's, uh, there's, it's, it's filled almost every period with kids, and part of that is a result of the fact that we gave the AccuPlacer exam to every single kid in the high school this year, um, and students, they, you remember it with fond, fondness, <laughs> and students who didn't meet a certain level of uh, of, of readiness, we, we assigned them to go to the Achievement Center for a certain amount of time to get some support and time and everything else. So I think that's been a really successful endeavor, but even without the AccuPlacer in, in motivated, there's been a lot of increase in usage, I think, by students. Um, and, and you've already heard about the Respect Team Bridges Dinner. Um, so I, I would certainly encourage you to go if you possibly can. The notice is a little bit short. We had almost 200 people last year come to our first Bridges dinner, so this is our second one, and we're, and we may do one, another one in the spring as well if people can't make this opportunity. We found it a really neat and exciting opportunity to meet people that folks haven't met before. Um, so I think it's a really neat opportunity. That's my principal's report, unless anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we forgot to mention that the golf team also took home the state championship. Right. Um, so thank you. Good catch, Howard. The golf team is very good. A lot of athletic success this season. All right, Mr. Mandrides. Okay. Good evening, uh, and thank you so much for the um, wonderful snacks this afternoon. Sorry I couldn't make it until the very end, but there was still quite a crowd there, actually, so that was really nice. Um, and whoever decided to have provolone, I love that. <laughs> I don't know who's responsible. Um, but thank you, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nice to be here tonight. Um, and so I have just a few things to share. I'll try to be brief. So working, at, working with the staff and the students and the parents at Pond Cove, just it continues to be a gift. Um, I'm finding that um, 
I'm running into several very bright students. I have just a couple quick stories. I had a, a student email me to it, set up a lunch meeting, and we <laughs> talked about the school website. Um, and I had a second student um, request to have lunch with me to discuss mm -hmm. the possibility of starting a chess club. And I said, how about Friday? And then she started to, to go away. And then she turned around and said, you can't Friday because you're singing to us in the cafeteria. So she had my schedule. Um, <laughs> so it's just, it's just always so amazing. These kids are just wonderful. Um, and there is video footage of that singing. By I know. It's, yes. That was Sherry is McGinnis. Is there any talent that we did not know? No. <laughs> no, no talent. Uh, but your assistant principal. Yes, she is amazing, right? I didn't realize she could sing like that. Um, so a few quick updates. RTI, so I'm happy to say that, um, I mean, we're thrilled to have um, the RTI educational technicians, a total of five now. So um, that system is, is now up and running. Um, we're utilizing them to provide tier two supports in both literacy and math. Um, so we've already gone through a process of using data, including NWA data, to identify students, areas of need, and um, educational technicians and classroom teachers are collaborating to provide supports for those students. Um, so that's, that's going well. Um, and I just want to add, we have some folks that have worked very hard to get this up and running. Um, our student support coordinators, our RTI teachers, and the ed techs, they have put a lot of time, a lot of extra time to, to get this um, up and running well. So I thank them for that. Um, just quick update on early release days. They continue to be a real big hit, very successful, seem to provide, for, with staff, um, provide optimal time for, for learning. Um, particularly, I think one of the most, po we're getting a lot of great feedback, one of the most popular times is when um, our, um, our literacy consultants, Tracy Warren and Kelly Smith, join us, they're, they're with us for part of the student day, and then also after the students are dismissed, so they're providing demonstration lessons in the classroom, and then working with teachers after, and so teachers are really loving that. And just one more thing, um, we're working on our emergency response procedures. <laughs> so we're working collaboratively at the district level, but we're also working with our emergency response team at Pond Cove, you know, for the details that are really particular to Pond Cove, but we're excited about that, about um, getting some um, solid procedures down and in, in informing parents um, when a, with appropriate information that we would share with parents about, like, what will happen in certain situations. So that's all. Any questions for me? Or? No. I don't think so. Okay, thank you. It. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eastman. So thank you for the snacks. That was awesome. Jason can have all the provolone he wants. I took the whoopie pies. <laughs> so oh, good. He can have all he wants. Uh, that was perfect. They, were, they would fit right in your pocket. They were small ones. <laughs> I have a long it's ride home. If I can get them out of my pocket, it would be great. Um, so. For me, one of the things, just sitting here trying to think about what I was going to say, and then I started jotting things down, and it really all kind of came to me that um, in an effort to kind of promote, I think, positive climate amongst staff and, and to build a culture um, of learning, I think, to me, it really comes down to having developing some opportunities for shared leadership where teachers can kind of take part in that and become leaders of the school where they're, they're feeling invested in it. And I think that is a little bit, it causes some teachers to take a risk sometimes to step outside of that box. And if you look on your, later on in the agenda, I think there's like 13 or 14 people that I'm excited to see are now going to be stepping into those roles. Um, so for me, I find that to be the powerful part of what's happening recently. Uh, Kathy and Jess are, are very supportive and helpful for me on that. I kind of lean on them to keep me organized and going. Um, but it's been very exciting to do that and to meet with these people individually and kind of share what the, what the job is and how empowering it is to them to say, you're trying, I kind of get the feeling they're saying, you're trusting me to do this and I'm gonna do it, like I wanna do it. So I found that to be exciting. I've been in places before where it's a challenge to get people to step out of their box and kind of do that. So for me, I'm finding that to be really rewarding and challenging. Our RTI process is going uh, really smoothly, I would say. Since we were last here, the um, student support team 
which kind of blends into the RTI process really for us, is has, has looked at MEA results, kind of triangulated that information with the NWA data, along with teacher and classroom performance, and now they're pushing in, especially to the sixth grade, because there was kind of a big need there from the fifth grade math scores uh, that we've identified. So I think they're providing service to 30 to 40 kids now, either in a push-in model or a pull-out model, and it's been bought into by the academic teams, which I find really exciting. It's not, I'm gonna go and take your kids, it's how are we gonna work with our kids? And I think that approach is much different. So for all of those things, and those are really teacher driven. I'm not the one guiding that. I'm, I'm empowering them to do it. And it's fun to watch them just take that ball and run with it and check in. So, so it's been really exciting. It, that my time here, kind of like Jason, I love being here. The people are nice. Uh, and, and the kids are amazing to me. And kind of the same deal. I've had a couple of kids come up to me lately like, hey, you know, can I? can I do this? I'm like, I don't know. Tell me why you should. And like, I really push them a little bit to, to become good communicators and advocate for themselves. And it never ceases to amaze me, their vocabulary and their thoughtfulness. And I'll send them away with like, hmm. And I'll say, so I'll see you tomorrow. I'll come back with it. Like, this needs to be a little clearer. And it's been really impressive. They're right back there the next day. So, so it's exciting to see that. Kids trying to find alternative pathways to, to do some things like foreign language or whatever. And, and I just find that exciting to, that they're that involved with their with their education. So, with that said, I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you. I, think, I think you should tell the rest of the board. We had a chance to chat over the Wookie Pies today about your very intense faculty meeting you have planned for December. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> so in December, our faculty meeting is going to take place at Easy Day Bowling. Uh, <laughs> so I think there may. So I'm trying to figure out the handicapping. <laughs> And as I, do I want to make the team the office versus teams, or do I want to draw out of a hat? Yeah. I was going to say, setting up yeah. the teams is going to be your tricky... I know. You know. No rails. I think there's some people that are kind of laying in the weeds. I'm not sure. So <laughs> They do have those little frames that you can take out and drop the balls. Oh, yes. The Just roll thing. Say, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No buffers. No buffers. This is a buffer-free zone. We're not having buffers. <laughs> no buffers. So. All right. Thanks. Thank you. I'm moving on to item 5C. Um, Mr. Shedd is back in the spotlight. So this is about, um, I recently filed a special progress report, which I think, I think you all have seen or have access to, um, with NEASC, which is the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, which is our accreditation agency. Um, so they do, as their name implies, they accredit schools and colleges all across New England. Um, they actually um, are a large accreditation agency um, in their work with international schools as well, which is sort of an interesting piece of what they do. Um, so essentially what NIES does and any accredited agency does is they sort of set standards for um, effective schools. Um, and then they, every 10 years, send a team into a school to see how the school is doing against those standards and against the self-study that the school spends a long time preparing. So um, we had a NEOS team visit us, I think it was March 2016, and last fall we got word that our accreditation was continued. Uh, as with m most schools that go through the process, well, all schools have to submit progress reports um, against certain recommendations that, that NEASC sets. And so this is the first of the progress reports. Um, so I did submit it. As if you, if you read it carefully, I was actually thinking about asking for a postponement of, the, of this initially because quite honestly we've been um, spending so much time in proficiency-based education, proficiency-based grading and reporting that I was a little bit concerned that I, um, to be honest, I, it's, not, it's not a report that I've taken out many times since we initially got it with the highlighted recommendations. I was pleasantly surprised, not entirely surprised, because I knew there was a significant amount of overlap between the work we're doing and the recommendations that NIASC made. Um, but after speaking to Mr. Edwards, who's the director of NIASC, I, made, I just decided I would go ahead and submit a special progress report. So that's what this is. And the three highlighted areas of recommendations, I'm not going to go over these in detail unless you have any questions. But we're basically around um, 
completing the development, uh, completing a process, defining a process that leads to more specific reporting against how our students are doing compared to our academic, civic, and social expectations in our school mission statement. That happens to coincide really nicely with the ever popular habits of work that we are doing, um, the learning target work that we are doing in the ninth grade. Um, so there, and, and that's essentially the point that I make in this part of the progress report is describing that work. Um, providing professional development around developing scoring criteria, which coincides really nicely with, again, another piece of what we're doing connected with our proficiency-based education and work, and that is we're working with the Great Schools Partnership to help with offering professional training around developing of scoring criteria and rubrics and those sorts of things. And then involving stakeholders in developing and reporting to the stakeholders about how their students and how the school is doing, which again, we are providing a lot more detail than we used to against uh, describing much more specifically how students are doing as writers, as, as presenters, as researchers. Um, that's most complete right now in the ninth grade in English, Math, Science, Social Studies. Over the next few years, we will, it will become much more complete. In fact, even next year, all of our teachers and all of our courses will be reporting against learning targets. And again, all of that work dovetails really nicely. Um, I will say that I'm also one of Maine's representatives on the New England Commission. Um, and I just attended a meeting last a couple weekends ago, and they're doing some interesting changes to their standards. Um, one of the most frustrating pieces of the NIAS process for quite a few years has been the requirement of developing school-wide rubrics, which always feels a little bit artificial. They have actually are in the process of changing that considerably, giving schools more leeway, and they're actually another major change. They are asking schools, instead of looking at every possible standard, they're asking schools to define a school improvement process that looks at particular standards and then, and then essentially looks at how schools are doing against the, the school improvement goals that the schools are setting for themselves. Um, there's still a self-study process, there's still a verification process, but I think it's actually a, a pretty exciting direction of movement for NEASC, um, and it's a really, really, really big change for them. It's as, it's as big, if not bigger, than a move towards proficiency-based education um, for schools, individual schools. So that's my report, unless anybody has any questions. Just, just one. Yes, Barb. This was really, really helpful to read, by the way, and I'm glad you found it to overlap with your authentic work in, you know, sort of brain dumping yep. this, and I'm sure that was helpful. For a lot of reasons. Absolutely. I wondered if there's any feedback yet about our change in athletic eligibility policy and the habits of work. Um, so <coughs> it's been the subject of lots of communication, including one that most recently went out. Um, for those of you who are high school parents who saw it, it was the, sort of my tortoise and hare analogy because <laughs> um, we have made some significant changes and it's a pretty much of a cultural shift. Um, so we are actually, a team of us sat down today because our second grading term just ended. So a team of us sat down today to sort of take a look at um, and develop the ineligi eligibility list and the ineligibility list. And after we sorted through everything and we applied the flexible approach that I mentioned in that most recent letter to parents, um, what we're doing is we're not looking only at this most recent grading term for purposes of determining um, whether or not kids met the criteria for the habits of work, uh, but we're looking back at the previous term as well in, if there are students who would have been in trouble who didn't meet it just during the H2 term. So by the time we filtered all that stuff through, um, the total list of students who will be getting letters in the next couple of days um, letting them know that they're ineligible is about 17 students which compares extremely favorably to what it has been in the past under previous eligibility policies. I'm also going to be sending out letters to other students who would have been ineligible had we not looked back to the previous grading term as well, just as an educational piece in the hopes that people will begin to absorb the sort of the new habits that it's going to take to be successful under the revised eligibility policy. Jeff, I just want to compliment you on the email that you sent out. I, I wanted to 
thank you in the email and I forgot. So it was excellent and very helpful as a, as a parent. Thank you, Suzanne. Please. So first of all, going back to your report, I just wanted to um, commend you, Mr. Shedd, and your faculty for all the work that's really gone into um, making adjustments that you feel that are not just requested through the accreditation process, but that you believe in. And I know that sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of a, a blend. Um, but I know that you and teachers and staff that worked very hard to include even over this past summer. Um, I just want to acknowledge there's a lot of work going on and I just don't um, want you to not realize we appreciate it and we recognize it. And everybody that works at the school. Thank you. Regarding the, oh, we thank you and, and everybody. But, um, regarding the question that was raised by um, Ms. Powers, I, 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 um, I, I understand the the uh, thinking behind habits of work. Well, it, it is not too complex, and it's understandable. We, we, that's great. But I, I don't think anyone's ever wanted to have that. The 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 the, uh, the, uh, the, the penalty for that to, to deny students the opportunity to be involved in after school programs. That, that, that would be, in my opinion, um, unfortunate. And, and I know that your teachers are working hard to encourage students, remind them about the importance of habits of work. And um, I am happy that you've made this adjustment, by the way. And I, I would just like to think that um, in, 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 at, 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 it's possible that students would, in the near future, buy into, as most already do, to the, the, the benefit of this and not have it be a, a hammer over their head that right. if you don't, you're going to be denied and be punished. I, I just think we've we got to get past the punishment part and move toward, this just makes sense. And I hope that, that, that there aren't 17 students next semester. I hope there are, are, are a much smaller number. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'll start, Howard. On to item 5D, superintendent's report, to okay. include the November student enrollment. Let's start there. Okay. Let's. I just looked at the numbers. So they're flat. I mean, we're basically at 1,600 mm -hmm. uh, students, uh, and that's where we started the year. That's where we ended last year. That's where we are now. And so that's We've seen some That's, stabilization. Right, exactly. We have. I'm happy to see that. Um, okay, so we we have had two meetings since the last board meeting about the playground at Pond Cove. Heather has attended both those meetings, and I think that we're really making headway. The architect, uh, the designer has been meeting with us and um, we're getting Perry Schwartz, the new director of facilities and facilities have been great. Um, Jason's been there, Aaron Taylor, the nurse. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's really moving ahead. We think that we'll be looking, um, today we authorized to pay somebody, a, a, a surveyor to come in and do elevations. Is that, uh, that, that, is there anything but level out there? And, <laughs> So with that information, the, the designer thinks that she can come back with a concept and we're going to be coming back and presenting it to you as part of our larger budget presentation because we've got to decide, I hope the answer is yes, if we're going to just get this thing done next year or keep dragging it out. I mean, I know that's a negative way of saying it, but that's how I feel about it. It's taking a long time. It's been with us for some number of years. And this last year, to your credit, we got some of it done, but now we'd love to get it all done. So we're going to talk to you about some real, in real detail what that looks like and what the cost is probably in a couple of months. Does that sound pretty right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we're required by board policy and maybe others as well, but to look at student um, dropout prevention um, and at least annually. And 
and so we had, had a meeting at the high school a while ago with administrators, social workers, um, uh, let's see, well, I, anyway, a number of people from, from, from the high school. It was a really interesting meeting. Some uh, provocative ideas came out of that, um, of, of ways to engage and reintroduce students that are reluctant to come to school. And we, we left the feeling like, gosh, you know, there's a real commitment here to helping students that find it, have anxiety about being at school and, and try to, to connect with them and help them figure out a way to get back. And so I just want you to know that um, the staff of the school, with the encouragement of the administration, are going to be trying some, some things this year. I don't want to get into the details of it right now, but just know that that's, I thought it was, it was very forward thinking and, and hopeful. So that's going on. Again, to try and reduce the number of students that walk away from school. Um, you should know that there, we now have a Cape Elizabeth High School Theater Boosters organization that um, came to, to be um, in the last month or so, a lot of enthusiasm and support for that. Um, and I think that that's going to be wonderful for the, the future of the program to support um, a, what is, a, appears to be a, a, a dynamic and growing program. So that's lovely to see. Um, I also wanted to mention that you may remember that last year in, in negotiations with your teachers, there was a commitment to look at planning time and that whole issue. Um, we had a meeting earlier this week and um, I, I'm going to now start putting together some ideas uh, for the policy committee and solicit input from the teachers association and from teachers and the administration and this will be certainly public, it won't be a surprise to anybody, but trying to come up with something that helps resolve some tensions and some perceived inequity there. Um, okay, I'll see that at that, I guess. But that's, that ball is rolling right now. Um, same thing is true with the calendar committee. We've got calendar committee started last week. Um, they're meeting again this week. We're meeting again in early December. Um, and uh, it, you know, it was a, a, a lively first meeting. <laughs> Board members, uh, Kimberly and he Heather were there. Um, you may or may not want to speak to that, but, but anyway, w that's going as well. We need to get that uh, moving ahead pretty quickly now because other schools are needing to see our calendars to align for, for paths, honestly. So that's happening. Um, we met today, the administration, and we are already setting dates for our own budget planning for this upcoming season on budget. And we um, are all about meeting with Elizabeth and Susanna about agenda setting. We need to set some dates for the board around um, budget um, meetings to get to the point where we ultimately adopt a budget. Uh, well, one thing that we don't need to have answered right now, but I do wonder, last year you had a half day set aside for a budget conversation. I don't know if you want to do that this year, and, and, and so you may need to, you may be hearing from Elizabeth about um, some dates that look, we, we need to get some commitment on what, whatever it is that we're going to do to be sure that we have ample time to really fully explain and explore the budget proposal. Um, and the last thing I'll mention is that I was met today with um, three ladies representing the uh, CIF, uh, Cape Elizabeth Educational Foundation, and they have um, uh, done a great job. This, this season was, was one of the more active they've had in some time uh, in terms of the number of proposals and the amount of money that has been awarded. These are all grants that um, were approved by them, and I feel that um, they all deserve to be approved. Um, none of them come over that threshold of $10,000. Remember, 10000 was the threshold that would require your, your, your vote. But if you have any questions about any of these, I'd be happy to speak to them right now. Um, and if not, just know that 
these are going forward for um, for for the implementation of what, what, what's your question? I think a total of twenty-four thousand dollars, something like that. Mm -hmm. Any questions about the grants? Um, are we, um, have we reviewed the grants to see if they require any additional support from the school system in terms of construction or ongoing maintenance? Well, you know, that's really hard to answer. I mean, I, I, you, we, we, when, you, when you look at some of these grants, like let's just take the one in here. Let me see it for a second. Mm -hmm. Here is one in here. Um, that I saw as an example of what I find to be confusing. Well, here's one. <coughs> the Summer Cultural Exploration. What this really is, is that a social worker at the high school was generous enough to say, there's some kids in our community that um, are less financially, uh, are, 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 are not as advantaged as the majority of students in our school. And there's some things that we could do with them that could be going to a museum, could be going to uh, a, a, a musical, could be going out to a, a nice restaurant and, and giving them some experiences that perhaps they don't get to have that maybe in other families that seems to be not uh, that unusual. And it, it, it helped to, with the goal being to help them feel uh, welcome, comfortable, invited. I, I don't know what all the words are, but to be inclusive, let's use that word for a second. So let's pretend this program is successful. I, I, I would, would think that if it is, the question would be, then why aren't we funding it? Right? So does that mean that, that I mean, how, I could just start going through all, a number of these and say, potentially, could be ongoing. oh, there are other examples here of, of I mean, obviously the, the uh, which, which one is that? Pre yeah, okay, well, out. right, but that's one is intended to, well, it could be because, how about the ukulele, it's not that one, what if we had, what if we have a successful ukulele program? Are we going to then want more ukuleles? I don't know. I mean, th there are worse things. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they're, could they're, be the, the, the Chihuahua is meant to be, I think, intended to help uh, after last year's experience. We had some people feeling that there was some frustration or some angst around uh, the experience and some kids being in a year and some kids not chopping firewood and I don't, I mean, I'm serious now. Th these things were brought up that maybe we need to try and have you want to come in and help the parents understand the intent of this program and help the kids understand what it's about and which in part is to be out of your comfort zone, working around and being around other students and just your, your, your best friends and peers and on and on and on. So, I guess that, I, I asked that question today, if this is a good idea for this year, it may be that we need to do this again every few years. So again, I would personally hope not, but I guess it's possible. So I mean, I just don't know how to, you know, there, there are some planners, I can see half of these things saying, oh yeah, those things could impact the future budget. I mean, I, I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> I think that the ideas here are, as a group are interesting and um, and you know, I mean, it, 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 it promotes innovation, and <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, so I, I, I well, Elizabeth raised a question with me today earlier, that same question, and that, and that's when I started thinking about. It. I'm going, well, where do I stop? Well, I, my question was more in in terms of, I mean, I understand pilot projects and innovation, and it's an opportunity to experiment without risk, right? Which is fine. Um, my question was more in terms of, you know, for instance, taking the 3D printer as an example that ended up being a $12,000 hit. That oh, you're right. right. So those types of things, well, there are, is so, it half? What I can tell you is that there were several proposals that didn't make the final cut because along the way I had frank, respectful uh, 
conversations with the leadership of CIFA said, you know what, this one it gets me spooky and I'm not comfortable and, they, and so there were some things that didn't make even the final uh, 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 competition among those who put out, uh, this is not like everyone made it. So there were at least two or three I could think of that I said, I'm uncomfortable with this and they were dropped like a hot potato. Okay. I mean, I, personally, I, I wholeheartedly support Oh, I know you the, do. The, the support that CIF gives our, our right. system and our students and the thoughtfulness that goes into the grant applications. And I'm so happy to hear that there's more of an established relationship to talk about the impacts that their, right. their generosity oh, has we, we, we be, That's Every fantastic. single month, and we have real, candid, confidential conversations. And it, it's, it's, been, it's been excellent. Outstanding. That's really happy. Mm -hmm. so. Howard, I wanted to thank you for your work on that and also for um, making sure that C understands how thankful we are. Right. And yeah. this, this letter that you've drafted for them. Good. Good. John? Thank you. So I just wanted to, to follow up on you know, Joanna's comment earlier. We talked about this back in the policy committee and sort of went through this. Yeah. Um, it, it's helpful to be able, as they come forward, to just sort of be able to affirm our policy that we've reviewed these and they don't have anything that is substantial that falls into those categories. Right. And so, for example, when I view this list, the only two, for example, we're going to have ukuleles. The maintenance cost of ukuleles is not anything significant, so it would not rise to that barrier. So that's that's the kind of thing that we, we, we're affirming, we've looked at that. The same with renovating the teacher's lounge. That's right. actually going to be coordinated with our facilities and we're confident that, that that is happening. So as these are presented, this is part of our affirmation of that process that we have looked at how they integrate into our ongoing maintenance costs and, and uh, facilities plans and there is no significant impact. So as a folk, as long as we affirm, we sort of have a process that sort of proactively affirms that where we had none before. Okay. So Thank you, John. May I respond to that? Please. So I hope that you all keep asking these questions, because that's how it's not going to get lost. Mm -hmm. it, it could easily it could get right back to where we were about confusion, about process and decision making. So every, I hope that, because again, we're going to have another round of this in the spring. Ask me again. And next year, ask again. I mean, I think that helps us keep all fresh and on our toes. So with that in mind, it, um, I'm happy to circle back with you to, to draft sort of what is, would be a standard wording as we present these so we can make that clear affirmation. So we're presenting these, and basically, as the grants are presented, we reiterate the policy wording that we're reaffirmed with those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that it for you, sir? Yes, but I will say this. I still think, even if I were to say that, those magic words, you know, that you're talking about, I still think that there's a judgment call here. Mm -hmm. Some of these things could, you could just see it the next year. Mr. Shedd saying, I want to add to my budget $4,000 for a, a summer program. And you can say, wait a minute. I thought this was supposed to be a, uh, not well, be. Yeah. But the understanding isn't that it's an automatic, and that's right. where I think Right, because really the printers would be automatic. The difference is you're saying affirmatively we looked at it. We did not do that previously. Okay, got it. Very good. Thank you. At this time, I would like to recognize our two departing board members and thank them for their years of service. Bittersweet time. I can oh, quit it. Sorry. Quit it. <laughs> you too. <laughs> no dancing. Each of them have brought a wealth of experience and valuable perspective to the board. Both of these people have given much of themselves on behalf of the students of this community. Barbara Powers has brought years of rich experience in education to her role as board member. Her particular focus has been on policy first as a committee member and for the past two years as chair. Under her guidance, the policy committee has reviewed, updated, and drafted countless policies necessary to the functioning of this school department. What has been particularly, <laughs> particularly impressive 
is Barbara's unwavering commitment to connecting policy to the people who must work with it every day. Teachers, administrators, students, and parents. Barbara kept that connection to hearing what students, and thus teachers, most needed during budget discussions as well, bringing a rare balance of advocacy and pragmatism. She has also brought thoughtfulness and a discerning perspective to our superintendent searches. Barbara, your knowledge, your support, and your leadership will be sorely missed. We thank you deeply for your service. Thank you. Appreciate here, here. I appreciate that. I, um, can I have a couple comments? I would just like to um, mention that it's been just a, a true joy for me to have served this community for 18 years, starting in 1980 as a teacher and administrator, and then moved next door for 16 more as an administrator and finally as a superintendent. And when I retired in 14, in 2014, I thought, I need to get back involved with CAPE. I've missed it. My daughter graduated in 95. I want to become reacquainted with the community. I want to help continue supporting positive leadership, uh, enhanced morale, and I feel like with this board and this superintendent and wonderful uh, contributions of our administrators and our student reps, it's really come full circle, it, it seems to me. And we're just in such a great place, and I've really appreciated getting to know all of my colleagues and reacquainting with many teachers and meeting new ones. Um, so in the course of my three-year term, I did sort of accept this um, bucket list role of being a part-time, very part-time superintendent principal out on Long Island. And I've just found keeping two budgets and two sets of policies, policy issues straight was a little challenging. So, so I decided I needed to give full focus to the folks who had entrusted their school department with me out on Long. But I'll miss it. I've enjoyed it a lot. And I really thank you for your confidence. Thank you. I'd like to say something also to you, Barbara. Um, it's been a pleasure, I'm just going to read it, it's been a pleasure to have another Michigan native joining me on the board um, in Cape Elizabeth. It's hard to believe that you've only been on the school board for three years. Your contributions to the district and the board have been far-reaching and significant. You are careful and thoughtful in your approach as policy chair, and you have been immensely productive and forward-thinking. And while I admit that I was a bit intimidated when you, a former superintendent, principal, and veteran teacher, first joined the board, it became immediately clear that your experience was a huge asset and that your nature, and truly approach your nature was truly approachable and genuine. Thank you very much for sharing your time, insight, and passion with us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm there is another departing board member, and we do have gifts for both board members, and we'd like to present those to you after we speak, Thank you. if we may. So over the past six years, Joe Morrissey has taken on many leadership roles and has thus devoted countless extra hours of service to our schools. Joe served as policy chair, overseeing a comprehensive policy manual review She's been school board chair, I can tell you that's no picnic, <laughs> giving time and energy to planning, organizing, and communicating on behalf of the board. Joe has served as finance chair for the past two years, organizing and managing all workshops and meetings during budget season, which translates into months of weekly meetings during which all facets of the school budget are examined and discussed. I'll miss those the most. <laughs> <laughs> In all of these various roles, Jo has remained steadfastly student-centered. She's the first to ask how students will be affected and if students have been involved in whatever decision is being made, whether it was a policy update or a budget item. With her strong background in public health, Jo has helped the board see the broader implications of its work, especially as it might relate to the physical, social, and emotional well-being of students. Joe, we will miss your passion and your commitment to high standards and your student-oriented perspective. We thank, we thank you deeply for your service. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that wasn't about me, but thank you. Those are incredibly <laughs> kind words. 
Um, I didn't prepare anything tonight to say because I figured you all have sat through enough of JoJo's pre prepared speeches. But I do want to say that I wish all of you the best. And I really want to also welcome Mohammed and Hope. Um, the, the opportunities that you have before you, I can say just briefly, I think I learned more than I contributed in the past six years. And I hope the same success for you. Something too. Uh, Joe, I want to thank you and also your family for the, all the time and energy you have graciously dedicated to our students, teachers, administrators, and the town of Cape Elizabeth. It's no small number of hours. Thank you also for serving as a mentor to me upon bringing uh, upon me joining the school board four years ago. I have benefited greatly from both your insight, guidance, and wit. In your role as policy chair, board chair, and lastly finance chair. You have demonstrated your attention to detail, sensitivity to all stakeholders, and an unwavering commitment to our students. With your help, our district has embarked on a path that values and supports the whole child above all else. You should be proud of your contributions. I am very grateful for your six years of service on the board and your generous time on behalf of our community. I we'll miss you too. Thank you. And on behalf of the school department, we have Board isn't horrible. <laughs> Moving on to item six. Oh, I did oh. want to say one more thing. Oh. Okay. Sorry. I just wanted to put in a pitch for public service. For what? Public service. I think that there are a lot of people out there that don't think it's for them, that it's something that's um, too hard, too difficult. Everyone else out there looks so talented, and I'll never measure up, but I've got to tell you, you can do this and I really I know that the elections are over and this is probably too way premature for the next cycle but for anyone who's ever even considering public service um, you get more back in spades than you give so please consider thank you item 6b in new business May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the following 2017-18 administrative, athletic, and extracurricular personnel nominations as listed under 6B for the high school, Palm Cove, special services, district, PLCSS, and whoop, all of them, middle school, district proficiency, base ed committee. Second. <laughs> a long list. I started writing on the side. I thought Andrea had forgotten to put a motion on there. Such a long list. Um, discussion. I just, I just wanted to note that, as uh, Troy said, it, it was really refreshing to see a bunch of new names um, mm -hmm. come forward. It's, it's great exciting. to see. Further discussion? All those in favor? And item C, although there is no motion required, Barbara, would you, for the last time, talk us through, us. Walk us through a little bit? You have uh, five first reading policies tonight, which means this is just sort of information only, and any comments or questions I'm happy to bring back to our next policy committee meeting in two weeks. Uh, the first three, BCB, Board Member Conflict of Interest, DJE, Bidding Purchasing Requirements, and DJH, Purchasing and Contracting Procurement Staff Code of Conduct, 
aren't usually things that surface as well policies, <laughs> but I would say that these are before you as, uh, as requested by our business manager. They uh, are intact except for any red lines that talk about some new federally required language that was shared with her recently at the state uh, school business manager meeting, I believe. So as you look at conflict of interest, you'll notice D, code of conduct, it's around federally funded procurements. So it, it's really just being very clear about board members never benefiting from anything that might be happening in a district around that has a financial piece to it. Um, bidding and purchasing requirements, again, you'll see there's just language added at the end, federally funded projects in terms of what's required for follow-up and so forth. And let's see, the third one was on um, oops, purchasing, contracting, procurement, staff code of conduct. That is a part that needs to be added. So that was from Catherine. Mm -hmm. Any questions on those? Which I promised, she asked if she needed to be here to answer questions, and I said, honestly, this is a first read. Howard will tell you <laughs> there's yeah. questions. So she went home. <laughs> I just wanted to either draw attention or ask a question in um, board member conflict of interest in mm -hmm. the volunteer activities. Yes. We actually had um, a parent bring up a question around that, and so just kind of clarifying that um, like I know there are many of us who have children in the schools and we were, you know, the occasional volunteers in the building before we became board members. And so um, clarifying that's not prohibited or anything like that. Primary responsibilities, right. keywords there. Yep. So you wouldn't be asked to head the volunteers of Pond Cove School, for example. But you certainly can be one. Mm -hmm. So I think the primary responsibility is just to take away any pressure that might be felt by staff or admin if one of us were to serve in a voluntary supervisory position. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're good. Right. Okay. Just wanted to sort of highlight that yep. for Absolutely. the public and parents. Okay, anything else for Kath? <laughs> All right, then we spent some time also in our last policy committee meeting with um, our nursing staff and they had asked that we revisit administering medication to students and mm -hmm. also the uh, interesting question of medical marijuana in schools. Mm -hmm. So the language you see in front of you is honestly directly from them. Mm -hmm. This is nothing that we have wordsmithed. If there's any questions about what they're looking for here, again, they're going to be back with us in two weeks to talk about blood borne pathogen protocols. So I think you'll notice in administering medication, they're trying to bring greater <coughs> transparency and expectations to everybody in terms of what students who are capable of, of self-administering some kinds of medications, uh, what that would include, which is insulin, close to your heart. Yeah. And, um, and also the, the whole thing about over-the-counter medications and what kids may have access to with parent permission. And interestingly enough, the portal even allows for parents to certify which medications their students can have with them, the acids, uh, things for headaches, and so forth. Um, nothing that's a controlled substance will ever be in the hands of students in the high school, ever. Um, that's all administered by staff. So if there's anything on, in their language that you wish us to bring back to nurses, I'd be happy to uh, do so. But this seems pretty, um, that's a word, just very straightforward and reasonable to us when we review it closely, very closely with the nurses. The final one on medical marijuana in schools, the, the big jump out for me here is the, the very few times medical marijuana may be in fact prescribed for a student coping generally with pretty serious conditions, is that we will not ever be administering it. It will be the primary caregiver. So a parent would literally come to school. It has to be, um, it's, it's uh, not in any kind of smokable form, say there was a marijuana tablet or something that's helping with nausea. The parent would need to come to the school, meet the child in either the principal's office or the nurse's office, administer it themselves, and then leave the premises. Mm -hmm. So very, very tightly controlled, but recognizing that this is now a de facto um, part of treatment in some very rare situations, mm -hmm. and they wanted to get that into a policy. 
I think that they um, that the nurses said that there was some clear language that it could not be in the nurse's office, right. but um, okay, so it's just the yeah. principal's office. I was reading, yeah, or some other space that would be directed by the principal. The principal, yes, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It cannot may be administered office. only at the principal's office or area designated by the principal. The primary caregiver must go there directly after sending it at the main office. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what the ban is from having it administered in the nurse's office. I don't recall. I don't recall, but the, I, I believe the nurses said it, but there's this no, the the state state so, yeah. This is a state level, and they, yeah. I think they just don't want nurses involved with this as uh, when, the, when, the, when the recommendation came down, this is before the vote to, to legalize marijuana in the mm -hmm. first place. I think they wanted to separate nurses' duties with medications from what is still considered to be an illegal substance and the parent wants to, has evidence from the physician and they will personally come and administer. It keeps the nurses out of being confused with mm -hmm. what's legal, what's not, what's medication. What, I mean, it's just Right. Keep them separate from it. And it, it's never intended to be legal for anyone under 21 right. anyway, so right. that's not going to right. change. And it does state very clearly about, you know, keeping all school personnel away from right. handling or administering, so I mm -hmm. think it would make mm -hmm. sense it's clean to keep it out of the nurse's office because, right. you know, sometimes that does get confusing. Right. Mm -hmm. well, we, Thank the nurses in the school department for yes, they put a lot of time into yeah. this, mm -hmm, they and have. we still have um, a lot to hammer out in the blood blood pathogen protocols. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if our student representatives have any feedback on the last two policies: the administering of over-the-counter medications and medical marijuana in schools. Yeah, we were sort of just going back and forth on the just like what that specifically means, like difference between like a controlled substance and like a prescription and where like that line is and what um, maybe just some clarification on the thing that says um, <laughs> part three um, and how it states that prescription medications except as provided in this policy like what that's referring so essentially, would a student who has anxiety, who's prescribed medicine for that anxiety, be allowed to possess that? Right. If you if you path. keep reading, with prior parental leave guardian permission on the student information form, students may receive these at school. So it, it kind of, you have to kind of keep reading through the whole thing. But I agree, there's sort of a double negative positive thing in that first statement, and that could be clarified a little bit. So that's. As of now, I know that that policy is you then go into the nurse's office to get those. Is that still the policy? This is saying, or does that mean that you would be able to like, keep them on you? Well, that, that opening statement, high school students shall be permitted to possess and self-administer prescription medications in school on a case-by-case -case basis. That would be a situation where your parents would talk to the nurses about the fact that they trust you to make those calls. Okay. So case by case is the key words in this policy. And except for controlled substances, meaning that's nothing they want out in the school population um, in any student's hands ever. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. But we'll, we'll get back to this with the nurses. But yeah. We need to see this. Please. But your nurse, Ms. Baxton, is very involved in and, and, and editing all of this. Mm -hmm. So it'd be wonderful if one or both of you could talk with her about your concerns and questions because she's coming back to our next policy meeting and she may have some other new thoughts about this based on that conversation. So but I encourage the two of you to speak to her and she would welcome it. Okay, if there's any further clarity that would be useful, it would be great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item seven, committee reports. Do we have any committee reports? Yeah, I just want to um, bring you up to date on the comprehensive planning committee. Um, we are in the middle of, or near the end of reviewing our first review of the housing chapter. And transportation is also on the docket. Um, I want to keep encouraging people to get involved. Um, 
with this and uh, the next uh, comp meeting is always open to the public, they're all open to the public, is December 6th at uh, 7 p.m. And then in January, in, in addition to our monthly meeting, we're going to have a public forum um, on January 25th. We don't have the time yet, but it's probably 7 o'clock and most likely in here. And that will review in part um, the survey that um, we've got a really good um, rate of response to. So just encourage everybody to get involved because it, it influences you know, our future. Thank you. Yeah. Any other committee okay. reports? Wait, Spurring Building Committee has re, re, uh, started meeting once again to determine the future of the Spurring School. Um, just had an initial preliminary meeting. Um, I don't know, I, were you at the mm -hmm. Monday morning? Monday? So, because Perry was not there. Uh, there was no meeting last night. Uh, yeah, Perry had to go home sick. So, we're meeting Monday night yeah. at 7. Yeah. This coming Monday night. So we have some preliminary information about what it will take to rehabilitate the building and looking at moving forward with recommendations to council on, on, on future use. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, and I'll just read on it. Sorry. Um, I would, will just comment on the calendar committee. Heather and I um, both attended the meeting. Um, we had the administrators from, I think Jason had a scheduling conference conflict, but the other two administrators and representatives, um, teacher representatives from the elementary school and the middle school, and parent representatives from the elementary, middle, and high school, I believe. Um, we covered a lot of ground, just kind of um, preliminary discussion um, about how uh, the teachers and families were feeling about the early release days. Um, there was concern from the um, Pan Cove representative about the impact on working parents. Um, at the end of the meeting, um, after the meeting had disbanded, we started kind of brainstorming some ideas, and you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity to uh, make improvements um, for working families in that realm. Um, it seemed like the teachers um, found the time to be tremendously useful. I think that um, maybe the high school teachers were still um, a little remorseful to give up class time, but um, uh, we talked about parent-teacher conferences and um, how that worked in November this year versus in other years it's been in late October, um, how we would handle uh, election day in the future, acknowledging that the week when we had um, election day this year we also had veterans day and so it ended up being kind of a chopped up week um we also talked about um would we maybe consider conferences not during the school day um so th we discussed a lot of different topics and um the plan was to um, collect data from teachers parents and um, community members on how they were feeling about all of these topics and we're reconvening um, this coming Friday morning at 7 a.m. November 17th and then we have another meeting um, scheduled at this point for December 1st at 7 a.m. as well and those <coughs> meetings are in the um, middle school LLC. Kim, who's chairing that committee? Howard. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Howard right, I just wondered who was in that hot seat. <laughs> Howard has that lucky task. Did I miss anything? Wrong? John. No, I thought that was very general. Just because it came up at earlier meeting today, um, at the end of the um, middle school parent association meeting this morning, and um, some of the topics that came up touched on what's happening with wellness committees. So um, I know there's interest in amongst some of the middle school parents about what's happening. Um, some of their concerns and would be addressed in sort of what wellness committee was doing. So um, if there's meetings coming up or what's happening with that, and I know there are people who are interested. Well, good. Very good. Is there another meeting for them scheduled? No, we have not set one, but um, if, if you could, um, I, I'm, I'm very open to hearing from parents what they're thinking about wellness and what we could do or do more of, I have no idea, but if, if you could just let people know, if, 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 if people want a meeting 
and arrange it, I'll be there. And I'd love to hear what, what they're thinking about it all. But, uh, but, but I will be calling for a meeting uh, of school personnel to, to talk and look at, at wellness and to give you all a report on progress that's being made this year to advance the policy that was adopted last year. But um, I'd be very interested in hear, hearing from parents. Thank you, John. Any further committee reports? Do you want to mention the search committee? We sure can. <laughs> of all things. The superintendent search committee is in full swing and um, has met to uh, do a first screening of applications and choose uh, first round interview applicants. Um, over the next couple of days, the search committee will be meeting to do first round interviews. Um, and we will be continuing to update the public on that process. And I believe that may conclude committee reports. So at this point, taking um, school board agenda requests. And I'd like to remind everybody that school board agenda requests can um, most efficiently be made via email or phone call to uh, the superintendent or myself. We do ask people to make those requests at a minimum of seven days before um, a meeting is going to take place so that it can be publicly posted. Item nine, announcements of upcoming meetings. I'd like to commend everybody for folding that into your committee reports. Um, I don't know that we need to go back in and uh, say all those again. I would just say November 28th, 5.30 for policy, before the workshop. Mm -hmm. Before the workshop. Thank Hopefully you. in the high school again, Howard, if that can work. That was handy. Um, you would like to meet in the, in the high school library, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is. That, was, that worked really well. Mm -hmm. And um, item 10. May I have a motion? I move we adjourn. And I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor. Okay. Yeah. All in favor. We're all there. We're all there. You're welcome.